hi guys welcome to pixel affair it's gobby here so in today's video we are going to recreate this flocking cables right so some bunch of headphone jacks um moving together and eventually in the video um one of them separates and move directly connect um, to another object right but we are going to create this particular simple scene so let's actually get into cinema 4d and see how we will do this so i'm in cinema 4d and before we go ahead and create the flocking cables let's first go ahead and create one of them to get an, an idea of how the whole thing works so i'll come in here and i'll create a null object i'll select the null object come to its coordinates tab and i'll start um, animating the rotation b right so i'll set a keyframe at frame zero zero degrees and at frame 90 i'll set it to 360 right i'll set another keyframe so if I hit play, you can see it's rotating in here. So let's put in any object, the object that you are going to trace. We could actually trace the null, but I have a reason why I want, I want to use a different object. So I'll create a polygon object. I'll make it a child of the null object, right? That's from zero. Make it a child of the null object. And I'll select the polygon object. And I'll move it up something like this, right? And if I hit play, you can see the polygon object is going full. 360 right we want it to be linear so i'll come into my windows um f curves all right i have it on the other screen so i'll select the null object you can see it has um this tangent looking so i'll make sure i'll select one of them Control a to select all of it and i'll click on this particular one linear and now everything is linear now that we have this, if I select the null object and come to the attributes in our F curve or in our um, timeline and come to the attributes, you can see it's asking us before and after what should happen. So I'll come to the after and I'll say continue. Uh, if I make my timeline uh, this one small, you can see it's the line is continuing, right? So it means that from here going, it will keep rotating forever. So now if I increase my frames from the 90 to as much as I want and hit play, um, you can see it keep rotating even though we've passed the 90, but it will continue rotating. I have a video on um, some tricks in Sima 4D on here, which I explain how all of these things work. So you can later check it out. So now we have our polygon rotating, right? Let me make it a little bit smaller. And now let's trace the polygon. So now I'll select with the polygon selected, I'll come into my MoGraph menu and I'll choose Tracer, All right? And if I hit play, you can see it's tracing our polygon, but it tra it, it's tracing every vertex of our polygon. So every point on the polygon will basically be traced, but we don't want that. We want to trace just the um, polygon as an object. So I'll select the Tracer, come to the object, and now uncheck Trace Vertex. And now let's hit play. You can see it's just tracing um, the polygon as one object, right? But it it continue um, it's tracing it continuously. So what we want it to do is we want it to trail. It's like sort of following it, right? So you come to the limit down here in the tracer limit. You change it from none to from uh, to from n, right? And now let's increase the number of frames to like maybe. 80 and if you hit play you can see from from 80 let's actually make it like 70. by the way i have a full tutorial that explains everything about the tracer object every parameter in here is explained in that video you can later check it out if you want the detailed explanation so now we have our um, polygon being traced right that's basically it but one thing um, we want to add is um, a little bit of, let's say, uh, movement, right? Some sort of dynamic movement in the trace. It looks very linear, right? And that we can use a, a, a deformer. So I'll come into my deformers and I'll choose a displaced deformer. Make it a child of the tracer, right? And I'll select the displaced deformer. I have a full tutorial on the displaced, uh, displaced deformer as well on here, which you can also check later. Select the displaced deformer, come into the shading tab, and I'll change the shader from um to noise. I'll choose noise 
and I can see there's some roughness in the tracer object. So I'll click on this noise type, uh, thumbnail and it will take me into the noise settings and now I'll increase the radius to maybe something like let's increase it to something like um, 600 and let's add animation so I'll set the animation to like 0 0.5 animation speed to 0.5 and now if we hit play you can see there's a little bit of animation in it it's not quite obvious right so let's select the displacer again come to the displacer object tab first of all let's change the direction from vectors normal to um, what, uh, planar right and now let's choose the positive x and now let's increase this as well the height as well so now let's hit play and see now there's some sort of a bit of animation and giving it a bit of smoothness so now you can even go back to the shading and maybe increase the global scale so that um, yeah, something like that maybe even more right so that it gives us some um, smooth movement but one thing is that you can see now the tip or the beginning of our tracer doesn't align with our polygon and we want it to align with our polygon because when you use the headphone jack if it doesn't align it also we have issues here Right. So how do we make just the displacer basically? So we want the displacer to affect, let's say, from this part going. We don't want it to affect all of these parts. Right. It's as simple as selecting the display uh, displacer deformer, coming to the fields, and you drag in the polygon in the field. Right. Now select the polygon. Let's increase the radius, and you can see it's affecting. If you see there's something happening up here, it's affecting only the top part of our um, tracer, right? So basically it's working, but just affecting this part. But we can go into the remap, wrapping, remapping tab here, and you see it should invert. So we we'll just choose invert, and I can, oh, it's affecting everything except this part, right? Let's also increase the inner offset. You see, if I increase the inner offset, you can see all of this part is being like mixed street right so they now set let's set like maybe 85 and now let's go back to the layer tab we can increase the radius you know and all of that so basically some sort of circle is being drawn around the polygon uh, circle radius is being drawn about around the polygon um object so that anything that falls within it wouldn't be affected because i've inverted it right so now if i hit play and see that side is not affected as much let's actually go back to the remap and let's add a little bit in the inner offset so that it gets a bit smoother all right yeah i think this is fine you can actually even go um select the field go back to the layer and let's can increase the radius a little bit more so basically, this is the idea. So now you can see it's moving as line, but there's a little bit of movement in our tracer and it doesn't look too linear. So if you want to add a little bit of deformation to make it look cool, this is how you do something like that. So from here going, it's, it's as simple as adding um, our sweep. So I select the tracer, hold all to add, um, come into my object and hold all to make the sweep appearance of the tracer right and i can see you have the sweep under the tree uh, the tracer under the sweep and now i'll create a circle uh, i'll make it smaller uh, maybe i'll make it smaller like five and now also make it the chart of the um sweep right let's see so now we can go ahead and even hide our polygon we don't need it make it even maybe points uh, make make the circle of uh, our circle three and now everything is fine so now let's simply add our headphone jack so i already have the headphone jack in here so if i enable it and see so have our headphone jack in here and i actually found it was something i took from the asset browser if you come into asset browser and check for audio cable you can see all of this so i just took one of them and um, remove the headphone jack 
right so now how do we get a headphone jack to be at the tip of our beginning of our tracer it's simple by just creating a clone object you might probably think you have to make it a child of the polygon or the uh, polygon object but no you create a clone object right and make that headphone jack a child of the clone object select the clone object come into its attributes and change the mode from grid to polygon um, objects and the object you want to clone on is the tracer so i'll drag and drop in the tracer in here and i can see if i hide i sweep you can see it's cloning 10 different jacks on our tracer and that's because the count if you come to the distribution of the cloner the count is set to 10. let's set it to just one and even though it's one but it's still at the tip of our um tracer right we want it here so i'll then come to offset push it to 100 immediately get to 100 you can you will skip back to the end and that's because loop is checked so if i uncheck loop and see now our headphone jack is right at the tip of our sweep uh tracer so if i hit play you can see everything follows and now i can enable my sweep right everything is fine but the sweep is too big right so it's either I make my headphone jack a little bit bigger and well like that um yeah something like that and now we basically have our headphone jack so that's basically the idea behind the whole thing so now let's actually see how we make it flock um together right so with the flocking we are going to use um particles but we can use several ways we can use um clones um, matrices every several strategies to actually do the flocking but we are going to use um cinema 4d particles right so with this with what we've learned let's actually create a new scene and start doing the flocking part as well so i'll create a new scene simply you can come into file and new project right and now let's create an emitter so i'll come into my up here you can see you have simulate tab and down here you have emitter so i'll choose the emitter and i'll change um the emitter size to probably um 50 by 50 or something all right and if i hit play you can see some particles um are coming out of our emitter so that's what you are going to use to flock um do the flocking right so let's increase the particles um the bed rate um of the particles or the bed edit out the particles to maybe 70 70 by 70 and then if you hit play it will play till frame 150 before it stops emitting the particles right so let's actually we don't want it to emit all of the time so maybe at frame 20 25 will be fine all right i think it's even still too much so i'll probably reduce it like frame 20 let's see and then um let's the particle is i think it's moving too fast as well so maybe i'll reduce the particle speed so if i come down here you can see you have speed i can reduce it to like maybe 60 or maybe let's add a little bit more maybe 70 and then let's add a little bit of variation because they are all moving at the same speed right so let's add some small variation to, to it so that some will move slow some will move a bit faster so slide variation so probably maybe 15 right and now if you hit play and see some are moving fast some are moving slow so that's basically our particles right we can also go ahead and add um, okay you first of all that's going to be our particles now for us to um trace our particles we are going to use more graph so i'll come into my more graph um matrix and i'll choose matrix right in the matrix selected i come to the grid and i'll change it from grid to uh, the mode i'll change it from grid to object and the object we want to clone on is the, the emitter so i'll drag and drop in the emitter and if i hit play and see the matrices, uh, matrices are on our particle um, particles right that's what you want so um, with the matrices and everything we can simply select the matrix come into our uh, MoGraph object and you choose our tracer 
So you can see the matrix has automatically been added, right? And now if we go back and hit play, you know, it's simply tracing. Everything is working fine, right? Now, first of all, let me go ahead and hide the matrices. Um, I mean the matrix, not the tracer. So if you hit play, you can see everything is fine, right? Now, well, I'll actually add a little bit of um, rotation to the particle. So, with the part, uh, I come to my simulation, and there's this force. I'll choose um, rotation to it. And what the rotation, if I hit play, you can see what's going. So, you can see it's giving it some rotation, and that's what I want, right? But I don't want it as this fast. So, I'll probably make it maybe seven. Yeah, so they move together. And because the matrix um, is a MoGraph object, you can also, let me bring it back, you can also use MoGraph um, effectors to affect it, right? So I'll select the matrix and come into my um, effectors. I'll probably choose um, the formula. Where is it? Formula effector, right? And if I come into the formula effector, let me select formula effector come to the parameters i want it to be moving let's hit play to see it's moving um side and side right if i hit play i don't want it to move i want it to go up and down rather so i'll probably set here to zero and i increase it by maybe um 10 right and let's hit play to see what you have Another thing I'll do with the formula is that I'll actually uh, uncheck scale and I'll come into the effector. I don't want it to be moving um, too quick like that. So, right, so I'll, I'll um, reduce the 360 to maybe um, 120, right? 120, right? And now let's hit play to see what we have. Again, so it's going up and down and at the same time rotating. We can increase the number of frames we have by a lot right so that's basically our object moving together we can even add a little bit of randomness to our emitter so i select the emitter come into my um effectors and i'll choose random effector oh actually i should have selected the emitter but i can select go to the emitter go to effectors and drag and drop in um my random effector i can see it's moving it all over the place right so I'll, I'll come back into my in the random i'll come to the parameters select the random come into its parameters and now i don't want it to affect position z because that's the position it's going so i'll set the z to zero i'll probably make this one 30 by 30 or even no let's 25 by 25 right so basically play around with it to get a little bit of randomness in it and all of that so now if we continue playing you can see we basically have um a clone um a matrix moving together like you know the way we want it but remember we don't want it to sweep forever so we can select this uh, tracer and come to the uh, attributes, the limits, and change it to from end. And now add some uh, something like that. Let's let it start. And now we have our object. Everything is moving like that. Maybe let's increase it to like maybe one twenty. And now we have. Uh, tracer still 120 I think it's not even enough so maybe we can do it 150 right so basically for now let's assume we are cool with it so how do we now add our um, objects basically our headphone jack so I'll simply come back to this scene I'll select my um, headphone jack edit copy and I'll come into this scene and I'll say edit paste and now i have my headphone jack in the scene right so same way how do we get it to the tip of our um, tracer, ob um, tracer object we simply bring in our clone again make it a child of the clone 
change the clone select the clone and come to the object tab change the mode to object and now we drag in and drop in remember the tracer into it all right and now you can see with this one it's cloning 10 on every particular trace line right but that's not what you want we want just one so i'll select this and i'll type one and see it's at the tip again like it was in the initial one so we will offset it 100 percent and then make sure we uncheck loop and now you can see we have our headphone jacks at the tip right so maybe i can select the headphone jack make it a little bit more oh actually i'm moving it so i'll select it i'll select the skill too and i'll make it a little bit um smaller if you want i can go ahead and hide my matrices all right and now if i hit play we basically have our um cables moving together all right so now we can simply put the tracer back in the strip so i select um oh actually create a sweep object and i'll make the tracer a child of it create another a circle make it a child but it's too big so let's make it like five five is still big maybe three or even two maybe 1.5 right so we have our trees object tracing our cable right and everything is fine now again so how do we add the what we added initially um talking about the displacement so it's simple we'll still go ahead and create in our deformers i'll choose um the displaced deformer make it a child of the tracer object right and then in the shading change it to noise can play around with the noise increase the radius and everything to probably uh, 500 come into the displacement come to the object make sure it's set to plane plain planar and now let's increase our displacement as well maybe maybe 40 will be fine in this particular situation right but we don't want it to affect the whole thing like we said initially so uh we come into the field and we'll drag in the emitter right i'll choose um i think point select the point and i'll increase it all right and i'll come into the particle um the remapping invert it and increase the inner set as well and this should be fine all right let me actually disable the sweep and as a matter of fact let me disable in fact you can select the cloner because you see it's slowing, um, slowing the scene you can select the cloner and change it to like something like render instance and that one can make it play quite faster right so let me first of all hide the clones and if we hit play let's see i want to see the displays okay let me select the displays i didn't add the noise in the displays so i select the displays i come to the shading click on the thumbnail to go into the noise and add a little bit of animation so maybe let's make it one in this case to see what we have you can see we have the animation at the back of our um tracer right so now let's bring back the sweep and everything and everything looks fine right let's get closer a bit everything looks fine if i bring back my clones everything is showing but you know another issue is that um some of them sort of intersect and there's very little you can do about that but um a way around it is that first of all because we are using the matrix, you can try and use something like the push apart effector. So if I select the matrix and choose something like the come to effectors and use push apart, right? And set some uh, some sort of radius in there. It will try to push apart every um, matrix that come uh, together. So if I, uh, let me drag it down. And in the push apart, if I enable my matrix, 
can see, let me actually go back. It's pushed everything away. That's because the radius that is set. So I'll reduce the radius to probably like very small, something like five. If you make it too big, it will be very jittery. It will move everything will be moving back um as well. In fact, I think the particles are a lot. So I'll select the particles and reduce it to like 50 by 50. Alright. And now let's hit play. You can see the push apart because you know it's trying to push them apart and everything. You can see it's giving it a little bit of that jittery. So you have to be careful the way we use the push apart. But then I select the reduce it a little bit more. Right, and now um, it should be a little bit fine. If we still think it's worrying, maybe can reduce it more so that it doesn't become a bit too much of a big deal. Another or another way around using um, another way to uh, um, also make sure some some of them don't intersect. This, for instance, let's say um, let's see. I don't like the way this particular um, I want let's say I want one which is very obvious uh -huh. so let me come up here and you can see this one this particular matrix is actually you know intersecting with the yeah, um the rest right so I don't want this particular um either, these two especially I don't want them to inter like be in the scene at all. I can actually get rid of it. And I can simply use the more graph selection. So simple, all I have to do is to make sure the matrix is selected. I have to my more graph menu and I'll choose the more graph selection object and nothing happens. Immediately I click in the scene and see there's this gray dot that pops up, right? And if I let go, check on the matrix object in the object manager this tag has been added to our matrix object. So if I hold shift, I can go ahead and add the object I don't want in the scene, right? Can select all of them. If I feel like hold shift, you can add it. And if you hold control, you can also deselect, right? So let's say I, I don't want these ones. I've selected about five of them, right? Can even add, let's say I come in here, I say hold shift and click and add this one. Right. I've selected all of this and I don't want them to be in the scene. I don't I want to delete them completely. Right. All I have to do is now because I have this selected, if I come into my effect test, more graph effect test, and I choose plane, you can see it has affected all those uh, matrices, right? But I don't want it to move rather, I want to disable it. So I'll uncheck position and what I'll do is I'll check visibility, but nothing happens. So with that, I'll go into the fields and I'll create something like a spherical field. And I can see it has disappeared. If I enable it, this um, disable a um, plane, you can see it comes. And if I enable it, it disappears. So I'll select the spherical field and I'll make it like very small. Maybe, in fact, very small point one. I don't want it to, I literally don't want it to be the scene. All right. So now it disappears. And if you can check at frame 101, right? You can see if by the time it will come back, I'm not sure you'll see all these um, cables here. So at frame 101, let's actually mark it. And if I hit play, right, and get to frame 101, uh, can see those cables are not there anymore because it has been disabled in the scene. If we think we want more, we can select this, make sure our matrix is selected and hold shift to add the ones you don't add and then when we replay we will disable it right but i feel like the push apart is giving it too much um g3ness or something so i'll just um disable it for now and maybe reduce the random randomness as well like the random Make it like 20 by 20. Or what I basically can do with the randomness, I can come with the randomness, I can change um, 
the in the effect i can change it from random to something like noise right and that one to add a little bit of animation to it and i will increase the animation scale by reduce the animation speed to like 10. And that one will add some sort of animation to it but then let's actually reduce it to like five and set this one to like uv to see what happens so from here go, you basically play around with it. Oh, let's check index. All right, and see. And even increase the animation skill, uh, skill a bit more. Yeah, and I think this works a little bit. I think I, I still feel like the animation speed is too big. Um, it's too much for the random. But basically, I, I hope you get the idea. So you play around with it, maybe reduce the animation speed still a bit more. Increase this one to like 600. Or even um, 1000. All right. And I think it should be fine. So from here going, it's just a matter of playing around with it. It's finding the right angle. And the ones that you think probably might be too destructive, you can actually take it off, right? Using the technique with the MoGraph selection. And all of that also works. Oh, I hope this was useful and you've actually learned something um, from this particular technique, right? So let's check the angle. Feel the randomness, it's giving it too much. Um, let me disable the randomness to see what we have yeah and this one is a bit a bit um cleaner than the randomness right so basically this is how you do something um like that with the flocking of cables together and i'm not necessarily you probably might not necessarily need this kind of thing but i'm sure you learn one or two things from the techniques um, used in this situation and you can actually apply it in other fields as well hope this one was useful and you learned something from it thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one